welcome to the Huntington Way Show, where we help parents navigate the educational maze. I'm your host, Yvonne Strawn, author and founder of InspirationalHomeschooling.com. Today's guest is Carolyn Martin. She is the Director of Government Relations for Christian Home Educators of Colorado. And we are discussing possible implications of government involvement in our children's education. Before we get started, I want to thank our sponsors, the Huntington Learning Center and Inspirational Homeschooling. You're listening on Power Talk 1040 AM, 98.5 FM, and 95.7 FM. Please like and subscribe to Power Talk 1040 on YouTube. Welcome to the show, Carolyn. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's great to have you here. What are some reasons people think that government should control our children's education? Well, I think there's a couple of things that you have to look at, like how was education started in the first place and what was the motivation there so if we look at that we're talking about they wanted to build a socialist society so they needed to get everybody on the same page and become workers right it was to feed working the um the industrial revolution that we had going on so really that's the start of education but today if you look at the um national Education Association in the UN and what they're looking at, they're trying to to create global citizens. Um, they actually say on the NEA website that there's more than 3 million people who believe in opportunity for all and in the power of public education to transform lives and create a more just and inclusive society. That's their aim. It's not about the pursuit of truth or virtue, which is I believe what our founders said. Our founders actually said, this is what James Madison said. He said, the advancement and diffusion of knowledge is the only guardian of true liberty. And then Samuel Adams actually added, if virtue and knowledge are diffused among the people, they will never be enslaved. That was their aim for education, truth and virtue. Not today. Today it's about building global citizens, inclusive you know, societies and, and all this other stuff, which is agenda driven. If you really look into the NEA, it's about transforming our society into the likeness that they want it to be, which we're talking about Marxism, yeah. really. That's what we're looking at. Oh, yeah, that's so true. And boy, if we are going down that route, we're, we're not no longer, you know, teaching the morals and ethics and values that we really seek to teach, teach our children. Absolutely. And, you know, in order to sustain our republic, we need self-governing people. And you can only do that if they're virtuous. You can't govern yourself if you don't have virtue. So, oh, yeah, that's so true. Now, Horace Mann often referred to the as the father of public education and other founders of public schooling had these thoughts in mind as they petition legislators to pass compulsion laws and to levy taxes to support government-funded education. Now, listen to some of these statements. The children who know how to think for themselves spoil the harmony of the collective society which is coming, where everyone would be interdependent. That was said by John Dewey. He is the philosopher of education reformer of the late 1800s to mid-1900s. And then this one, only a system of state-controlled schools can be free to teach whatever the welfare of the state may demand. That was said by Albert Cubberly, and he was the former superintendent, in, uh, superintendent of San Diego Schools and Dean of Stanford University School of Education from the late 1800s to the early 1900s. Parent choice proceeds from the belief that the purpose of education is to provide individual students with an education. In fact, educating the individual is but a means to, tr to the true end of education, which is to create a viable social order to which individuals contribute and by which they are sustained. And that was said by the Association of California School Administrators. Um, what are your thoughts on these statements? <laughs> yeah, I think it kind of speaks to what I was saying before, that John Dewey and Horace Mann really were looking to create this socialist utopia mm -hmm. and to do it through education. And we've seen that. Another quote from John Dewey, he said this, there is no God and there is no soul. Hence, there is no need for the props of traditional religion with dogma and creed excluded, then immutable truth is dead and buried. There is no room for fixed and natural law or permanent moral absolutes. The very thing that contradicts our founding, right? We were based on natural law 
and the supreme ruler. We, and so we're stri he wanted to strip all of that out and build this state utopia. Um, and even though the, this, the California school administrators mention individuals, they don't really prop up individuals. Although our country was built on this idea of individual rights, no. It isn't the collective they're, they're really aiming for. So I think these statements really epitomize what, what they were after. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you're taking individuality out of society, then how is society um, going to work with each other to, you know, offer better and better things? You know, if you're all having to be on the same platform, how, how are we going to have really great companies and ideas come to life. Exactly. You can't, right? Mm -hmm. We, I mean, out of America came some really amazing things, right? Our, yeah. All of our technology, all kinds of um, innovation. You don't get that innovation in a socialist society. You just don't. Um, and so they are trying to squash it. They really want global citizens who will all follow along with what they, they want. And, you know, you take the COVID what we just went through, right? Yeah. Trying to get everybody on the same page, doing everything the same, controlling every aspect of your life. That's where the, this is all headed. Um, and so in the, in the public school systems, they want um, to teach you not about truth, mm -hmm. but about how to become that better citizen for them. Wow. Right? It's all... It's all geared inward. They're looking inward instead of what is outward. Right. So. Yeah, just kind of feeding the selfish ambition that we have in ourselves. In yes, a way. absolutely. Yeah. Now, Thanks listen together. to these statements. Give me just one generation of youth, and I'll transform the whole world. That was said by Vladimir Lenin. And this one, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Nelson Mandela. How does education impact society and culture? It impacts it greatly, right? I mean, education, the education system is building up the leaders for tomorrow. And so it depends how they're being taught, right? They're being taught that there is such a thing as truth and there is such a thing as virtue. Then we'll have a better society. We'll have a virtuous society. But that's not what they're being taught. They're being taught to follow their feelings, to um, evaluate everything in a lens of how they feel about stuff and not going after the academic mastery of certain skills to train their mind, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a problem. Um, I kind of am concerned about what our future looks like when they become the leaders. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you train children today and those are the leaders of tomorrow. Right. So you know, what direction are we heading in? What's the trajectory, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So the Bible informs us in Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. We must be watchful and proactive in educating our children. Carolyn, thank you for talking with me about public education. Join me in thanking our sponsors, Inspirational Homeschooling and the Huntington Learning Center for bringing this show to you. When we come back, we are going to delve deeper into reasons our government should not be in charge of our children's education. Welcome back to the Huntington Way Show. You are listening on Power Talk 1040 AM, 98.5 FM, and 95.7 FM. I'm Yvonne Strawn, and I'm here talking with Carolyn about reasons our government should not oversee our children's education. Carolyn, why should government not control our children's education? Well, I'm a Christian, so I believe that God gave jurisdiction over the education realm to parents. It's pretty clear that he didn't establish a department of education or an education system to educate our children. It really is up to parents. And this, this is more a modern um, phenomenon to have industrialized education. It didn't, it wasn't in, it wasn't, we didn't have it for the, for a long time. Sorry, right. I'm stumbling no, over those it's words. Fine. Yeah. But um, 
So, but what we're seeing today is this battle between worldviews and religions in our education system, which is was bound to happen, right? Um, if you take a look at some of the state standards, you'll find that they're not seeking after what is true. They're really trying to push a particular worldview and agenda on our children to develop the society that they want, which pays homage to the state instead of God, right? They've mm -hmm. taken God out of it. And so if you look at the social studies standards was the one, they just finished the social studies standards last fall of 2022. And in those standards, it mentions global 107 times, mostly in conjunction with a global society. So you can see that's where they're going. Not only that is, it mentions American democracy seven times. Mm. And no times do they call us a constitutional republic. We are a constitutional republic. They are twisting the truth to to their agenda. We're not a democracy and nor did our founders want us to be a democracy. We do have some democratic processes within our government, but we are a constitutional republic. And that's important. That distinction is critical. The other thing it um, talks about the constitution as being a living document so that it can change over time. That is not true. The truths in the constitution, the way they set up the government in the constitution, should are stable. They will serve us throughout all of time. So it's crazy that they say that. They do mention the Declaration of Independence seven times, but they really don't like the Declaration of Independence because it points back to God, to our reason for our rights. And, and they don't like that. Right. So, you know, if you look at uh, just a democracy, it's, it's the masses really um, deciding whatever it is. And all you have to do is um, influence the masses with propaganda and whatever you see fit. And when you do that, um, you're really, you know, kind of dictating what you want. And then the other point would be if you're having people look at um, inward at themselves and glorifying themselves and only doing what they feel is right or what they like, that's way different than um, you know, the morals and ethics, that's a solid foundation that's found in the Bible. Exactly. Yeah. And it, you know, education started out with parents um, doing the educating and then it was communities. Communities got together and they had similar values and they would teach each other, right? Mm -hmm. um, they would hire a teacher or whatever. But today it's the education in industrial complex is what I call it. And they have very different ideas about children. As a matter of fact, they believe that parents are barriers to the well-being of their children. And so there is this great move to separate parents from their children um, and to keep secrets from their parents. Mm -hmm. These are things that should never happen. The children are, the, the parents are the ones that should be over the children yeah, and be informing their values. Yeah, so. absolutely. And you do see it in all, in schools today is, you know, um, well, there's some schools that have what they call the transgender closets where the kids can go in, change clothes, and their parents don't need to know. They can change clothes before they pick them up, right? Yeah, exactly. And I think it was the New Jersey governor said um, that uh, there was a school district that said we want parental rights. Parents need to know this. Mm -hmm. And New Jersey governor said, no, nope. Not going to do that. Yeah. You are in trouble now. So for doing that. And we are seeing some of this stuff happen in our area here. Uh, Monument Academy just passed a resolution recently to affirm parents in making the decision for their children. Um, but there's pushback. Yeah. And so we need to, to help these people who are standing up, stand up against this and kind of take back this government school. But... Will that be enough? I'm not so sure. Oh, well, I pray it is. Yeah. I mean, parents are responsible for their children. And that's how right. we were made. We were made and born into families. And our parents are responsible. You know, a government going in between us just seems so illogical. Well, there's this, this movement that youth, children, even as young as newborns, have their own rights. Mm -hmm. um, and so parents aren't the ones who are responsible for them. They really do want to 
to say the state is responsible for them. They're just letting you as parents take care of them. Yeah. We're just giving you that ability. And really, I mean, that might sound crazy, but there are people out there saying these things in academia, in the judge, some of the judges, there is, there are people saying this stuff. Yeah. And it's people, not, I'm not crazy when yeah. I say that. This people is be, need to be aware of this <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Oh, and then, you know, we see also that religion is increasingly restricted in schools and has been for, uh, you know, lot. Absolutely. many years right um but what are some of the implications of taking that religion out of instruction well i mean we we already kind of talked about how can you teach morality without religion without right. some god i mean all of us must answer that question is there a god and if there is who is it mm -hmm. and humanism which is who um john dewey and and horace mann um are believed they believe that man is god but today that's moving it's moving away from that into this marxist realm which says the state is god so whatever the state says it's good now you know didn't we start a revolution because we didn't want king george telling us right. <laughs> that he was the one that was above everything and told us how to run our lives no but this is exactly what they're trying to to tell us the state is god and the state will tell you what what is right and wrong and that's a problem because it's creating this thing i call well that is called cognitive dissonance in our kids when two competing ideas or values you, you try to hold two different values you can't you just can't mm -hmm. and so you have this cognitive dissonance they are creating this in the schools because they're saying parents don't know what they're talking about Whatever values you're learning at home, you can just forget about those. We're going to tell you what values you need to hold. Mm -hmm. And we've already talked about some of them, right? That, that transgenderism is actually normal or mm -hmm. that being identifying as an animal or identifying as a disabled person when you have no disability, that that's normal. You create this environment where um, there's this cognitive dissonance and kids don't know how to reconcile those. Mm -hmm. They don't. And so we're seeing a lot of mental illness because of the things that they're teaching. And so that's a warning, I hope, to parents to understand that this is really what's going on. They're trying to change the beliefs, values, and attitudes of your children away from the ones that you're trying to teach them, which right. are the good things, the what is good, true, and right. Yeah. And so, you know, homeschooling is a big way that we can make a difference. And we can implement all of these things in our homeschool and we don't have government in between us and our children. So Carolyn, we're running out of time. So share where listeners can find you. Okay. So if you go to check.org, that's um, where I work. Christian Home Educators of Colorado is check.org slash freedom. You can sign up for my prayer emails there and you can get my blog post, but I'm also writing for a new uh, media outlet. It's called coloradofreepress.com and you'll find a lot of great information there as well. So I hope you'll, you'll join me um, in fighting and to keep our freedoms. Yeah. Great. I hope that this helps you guys get connected with Carolyn and really be able to help fight. Carolyn, thank you for providing our listeners with insight into possible implications of government involvement in our children's education. I express our gratitude to our sponsors, the Huntington Learning Center and Inspirational Homeschooling for bringing this show to you. This is Yvonne Strawn, today's host on the Huntington Way Show, where we support you in educating your kids. Thank you for joining us.